Welcome back to the Papa Me channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down. Today I did something that I kind of regret. I watched every <laughs> Final Destination film to rank them. To rank the Final Destination films! Remember those? As he plays and explode. And then stuff, people die. It's that movie. One through five. All five Destination films. Because here in a couple months, the sixth one comes out. Each movie was only about 90 minutes long. So what is that? It was six, seven hours? I don't know. It was a long time. It was a bit of a slog. If you haven't seen the Final Destination movies, if you've been uh, lucky enough to, uh, you know, skirt past them. It was a popular franchise in the no, early 2000s happy. into the early 2010s from 2000 to 2011, which the first movie has the big airplane thing and then 9-11 happened the next year. Mm. Oh no. Good. Yeah. If you haven't seen the films, this is pretty much how every eight friends survive. And these are the survivors. And they cheated death, but you can't cheat death. So death is out to get them in the order that they were supposed to die in the intended tragedy. So it's kind of a fun little thing about like, who's next to die? Death could be anywhere at all, all at once. It is hard to sit through some of these movies and not have a good time just watching some of the stupid, stupid ways of people getting killed, dismembered, smashed, whatever. And they're very stupid a lot of the time, but it's still a good time. Which another cool thing about this series is that the original movie it was just supposed to be an x-files episode idea kind of crazy and then someone was just like fuck this we're making this into a movie immediately and it was a big hit i mean for 11 years you know we did have a lot of this was kind of during the torture porn era of hollywood you know your saws uh, slasher revivals just a lot of killing and all that kind of stuff people like it people like to see people get killed and final destination is not an exception you don't go into a final destination movie for the writing for the story structure to see how these people overcome and defeat death you go for the kills. That's all that matters, baby. It's kind of like a, you know, going into a Friday the 13th movie or going to see a Rob Zombie film and not feel like you're watching like incestuous rednecks scream at each other for an hour and a half. You go for the experience you pay for, and that's exactly what we did. So, without further ado, let's start our list. Final Destination 1 through 5. Countdown begins now. I don't know if I like that as a transition, but you know. This past month, we've been getting ready to move, packing, doing all kinds of stuff, signing documents, and I gotta tell you, I am drained. This is why I am so grateful that I am long-term partnered with Gamer Subs. I drink Gamer Subs every day because it gives me the boost I need, and not to mention, God damn, is it tasty. Gamer Subs has been teaming up with all kinds of creators to make cool stuff, and right now, right this very second, Pay Money Wubby's Waifu Cup is for sale. Yes, Pay Money Wubby, the legend himself, has a very sexy and provocative waifu cup that you can drink from. We all know that waifu cups speak for themselves with provocative, fun images, but the Gamer Subs flavors are tasty, zero sugar, keto friendly, and you can get some non caffeinated versions just because they taste so goddamn good. And I gotta tell you, I would, you know, even if I wasn't sponsored by Gamer Subs, I would 100% drink it because it's that good. Go try titty milk and come back and tell me that it isn't fucking delicious, okay? Go check out Gamer subs at gamersubs.gg to see if there's any beautiful little cups left. Grab a cup, grab a tin, and grab energy bar if you feel like it. And use promo code POPAMI in the checkout or click the link in the description to get 10% off your order. Thank you Gamersubs for the beautiful partnership and back to the video. So coming in dead last, absolutely dead last, 2009's The Final Destination, AKA Final Destination 4, which also the title, fuck you. Already that like just put a huge sour taste in my mouth. This definitely was the worst one. It's definitely the worst acting. It might even be the worst script, which some of these you're like, oh. And like I said, you're not here for the script, but it is the thing that you are nibbling on the whole time while you're getting in between deaths. You don't need to make it brilliant, but it needs to be fun. And there was nothing fun about this movie. My God, it was such a slog. The thing too is 2009, if anybody remembers, if you were a little boy or you were an old man by this time or an old woman or a little girl, or whatever, this is like during the height of the 3D craze, right? That's the only reason why Avatar is the biggest movie ever is because IMAX and 3D were a thing and everybody was hopping on the 3D train, jackass 3D. This film, there was My Bloody Valentine 3D, like so many 3D stuff, it was nauseating. And this is no exception. Every kill in this is used and they're trying to implement the 3D technology in so many bad ways and so many stupid forced perspective shots. If you even remember the 3D from back then, it was so bad. The color was off. The whole film was darker because they used these like gray sunglasses that you would wear and it was just fucking atrocious. So by the start of this movie, which, you know, like I said, in these movies, it starts off and it's a big, something big's gonna happen and a lot of people are gonna die. That's how the Final Destination movie go. In this Final Destination movie, it starts off with Shinedown's Devour. Remember that song? Off the sound of madness? 
in this album? I sang that in the Elon video. Remember that? Tell my mother, tell or I, th I think I sung Second Chance, but still. We're at a NASCAR track, like all things to service the 3D. It's nothing to service like, ooh, this is fun. It's just to service like, oh, they're gonna be in 3D. So this is, you know, the big hip thing. And the CG, like I said, it's 2009. They don't have the biggest budget in the world and it's just terrible. And they use it for absolutely every single aspect of the film. I think even the, like, um, the majority of the blood CGI, I mean, like, unless it's just on the costume to begin with, there's no like blood packs or anything fun, anything really notable about the beginning, which usually at the beginning, it needs to be the most over the top crazy thing that crescendos us into the rest of the movie. And with this one, it's like people survive the NASCAR race. And then you have just some of the worst character acting, some of the worst dynamics. You have an alcoholic security guard where there's a moment where he's tempted by a glass of red wine by himself. And it's supposed to be like, oh, he's struggling. But in the next scene, he's just happily drinking champagne with him. And it's like, there weren't you an alcoholic? This is an alcoholic champagne, my friend. So then to kind of break down the uh, characters that survive, we have all the characters. It's let's just break down the kills. One was the Nazi racist. I mean, I said Nazi. You don't really need to say racist. He's also a Ku Klux Klan. I, I say all this because his kill is he's drunk and he's upset that his girlfriend died because the security officer, the alcoholic who was tempted by red wine, and he wants to go visit him and kill him or do something. I don't know. He has a cross. He's going to do the wood burning thing, but he has a swastika on his arm and that's a Ku Klux Klan thing. So it's just like, he's just like, I'm an ultimate racist. I'm not going to like dissect like, well, a Nazi wouldn't do that. It is what it is. But he's a tow truck driver and he gets his leg caught on the hook that goes underneath the cars, you know what I mean, to tow them. And the cab bust open and like gasoline pours out. And that's, you're going to see that a lot in these movies. Containers will topple over and it will cause absolute hell. That's the, it, need, it needs, to, that's just kind of like what it needs to be called at the end of the day is canisters falling over and causing mayhem, causing deaths. But essentially he gets caught on fire because of the sparks of the chain and he just dies. And then you get a big explosion and then the parts of the fucking thing fly past the viewer and uh, it looks terrible. Next on the list is the auto car mechanic, the custom auto guy. His death is really predictable. He's standing right by the weirdest fence I've ever seen. Like it's like a cheese grater fence. And you're like, oh, I wonder if he's gonna be pushed into that. Sure enough, he does. And once again, his sluggy, they do like a, an anatomically incorrect way of showing it too. You remember that bit in Kung Pao where the guy punches a hole in him and it's like perfectular singular tube. Like there's no guts or anything. It's like that, like chunks of him fall out like that perfectly with no, like no real guts or any muscle or anything. It's just like a perfect gelatin cube of diced meat. A uh, girl gets a car wash, but she has a faulty sunroof. So she almost drowns in her car. They try saving her by bashing into the front of her car to push her back, but that would just break your neck. So I'm surprised they didn't just kill her there. I, they, I was like, that's the perfect opportunity just to kill her. We're going to save her. Boom, break her neck. She's dead. Nope, she lives. She also has a fake out death at the theater where she's like, I wasn't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be watching this movie and the fucking thing explodes and there's like a giant hole in her stomach. But even that's a fake out. And she actually dies by getting hit by a, like a giant truck at the end of the movie when they're drinking coffee at a place called Death by Caffeine. I'm going to throw up immediately. The guy gets his asshole sucked out in a pool, which is kind of funny. That was that one's kind of funny. And also there's like weird child obesity, kind of like bullying. So that was kind of funny too. Lots of explosions, lots of Michael Bay explosions and stuff like that. Other people die. There are three notable kills though in this movie. And we're going to kind of break this down as well as the three notable kills in this movie are the tire to the face, a giant tire flies out of this track and it kills the racist girl's, uh, or no, the mechanic's girlfriend, but it just obliterates her head. It's really stupid and funny. It's pretty good. One of the car engines just smashes a girl into the stone stairs. That one's kind of fun. And uh, the best kill in the movie by far is the escalator one. Our protagonist is trying to save his girlfriend, but she just gets eaten up by the gears of the uh, escalator. It looks really cool. It's, uh, that, that's definitely the best one. But other than that, I mean, it's the worst acting. It's so boring. There's nothing fun about it, especially with these movies. You got to have little bits of just the violence all along the way. These kills were too spread out. They were so boring in between. Yeah, you get the fun escalator thing and the tire thing and all that stuff but it's forgettable. It's last on the list. Coming in at number four is Final Destination 5. Final Destination 5 is pretty similar to the fourth one. I mean, by this time, they're heavily playing into the 3D tropes. I mean, it was just, it's fucked. You have a lot of people from The Office in this movie. The main character is uh, Hunter, Jan's receptionist. Remember that uh, episode of The Office, the dinner party episode? He took me by the hand, made me a man. 
Remember that one? Yeah, he's in that. So is Todd Packer. I always forget that guy's name. I like it, that actor. He's cool. But yeah, just a lot of office people. The big way this one starts off is it's like a big company retreat. They're on a bus. I want to say they're like an organ. Oregon or Washington, like West Coast, doesn't makes you would go back to the bus and then you would hit the water and then smash forward. Bill Knight, a science guy, should have directed this. That would have made a little more sense. Oh yeah, and the tar scene. Todd Packer gets just a huge thing of tar, but there's this great little detail. As he's sliding off, you see like this layer of skin slide off with him and the skin stays. It's really, really good. I, that, that was fun. To give this one credit, it moves along a lot quicker. A lot of these movies, goddamn, do they linger on like, oh my God, people are gonna die. We have to get out of here. And it's this whole fucking thing. People be like, dude, calm down. No, let's just hang out here. It's fine. This one, at least he's just like, hey, people are gonna die. They're like, okay. And they walk off and then we kind of are on our way. So I, I, I will give it points for that at least. And then from there, you know, some of the survivors, the, 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 the gymnast, a thing of smoky powder fills the fucking room in a haze and she slips off and she just like crushes herself, which I don't know. I've seen enough videos online. I'm like, that it wouldn't work. Like, I mean, it looks cool. It's a, it's a fun visual, but it's like just really stupid. And also it made me think like, how heavy was this girl to completely obliterate her fucking body like this? Jesus Christ. Todd Packer gets a wrench to the face really quick and it's a funny visual. His face is just, they just had him lay there with like a prop in his face. It's really stupid. So then one of the girls is like, she's getting eye laser surgery done and uh, a little thing drops over. Hey, here we go again. A canister of some kind of liquid drops off and it fucks up the machine and it raises the intensity of the laser and to the point where it starts like apps like cutting up her eye a bunch and stuff and then it cuts up her hand and she's like oh and then she drops this teddy she's holding a teddy bear like she's a fucking child and then she slips on the teddy bear and just busts out the window it's really funny and she hits a car <laughs> it's really fucking stupid, but you know. Oh yeah, and then the first two, the first two movies had the Candyman actor. He's the coroner kind of guy, and he always gives this like a creepy little, you know, incidental about you know, ooh, death never sleeps, you know, that kind of deal. And he makes a return in this last movie, and it's kind of fun. He kind of gives us rules to the universe. Like in the first movie, he says you can't cheat death, and it's like this thing you just can't cheat death, and then it's gonna strike in the way of how you were supposed to die, and that kind of they, they, that rule sticks through. But then they kind of adjust it, like in the second movie they said if you give new life you can oh, defeat no. death and it's you're, huh and then the fifth movie he says oh if you kill somebody you've traded their spot so then it incentivizes people to murder people which is a fun concept for a final destination movie but you just get one of the you get an actor that kind of looks like dave franco and then he kind of just shoots a gun a couple times it, 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 there's no pay the, the rules are changing too much stop it final destination just stay who you are but the biggest thing with this movie is that at the end you find out that it's a prequel to the first movie they're getting on a plane to france and then you see the first guy from the first movie and you're just kind of like, go fuck yourself. And I think that around this time, like in 2011, there was the Thing prequel. There was just a lot of movies that were prequels and like kind of weird baits to prequels and stuff. So I don't know if they were trying to do a hard reset or by showing this or something, but having the prequel at the end, it was, it's not the worst thing in the world, but you know, it's, it's just, it's one of those things where you're like, huh. Oh. Yeah. It's that kind of, oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but for that reason, there's some good stuff. It's, it's definitely better than Final Destination 4, but my God, Final Destination 4 is the worst, but Final Destination 5 coming in at four, not too bad. Coming in at number three, Final Destination. Final Destination 1, you know, I mean, this is the thing that started it all off. I mean, like I said, this thing used to be a script for an X-Files episode, and then it blossomed into a full fucking 11-year-long franchise that's getting ready to get another sequel, Final Destination 6, here in a couple months, 12 years after the last movie. I mean, this thing is almost 23 years in the making. It's pretty fucking crazy. It's definitely one of the most notorious beginnings to a movie. I remember this was, like, really controversial at the time. The guy getting on the plane and then showing the plane explode, which, let me tell you something, when you see the plane explode, it's a very funny comedic beat. Extremely funny. It's like, oh my God, you just see like a 3D little plane that just kind of has that sound effect. <laughs> from far away, it's pretty good. And the kills, you know, this is when they were still finding like, you know, how gratuitous do we have to go? I think they tried to make it seem too much like an accident and they were trying to base it on a, a lot in like a reality kind of thing. Like, oh, these are little things. We get introductions to our first water slip. A lot of water deaths in this one. Kind of crescendos into, uh, we see Stifler get his head knocked off by a train, not bad. And then there's like a lightning cord car explosion at the end. Or the end, there's a giant sign that crushes somebody. But really like, 
like it's an interesting concept of just the idea of death versus like the kills themselves. Just the idea of being killed is kind of the main source of horror here. And that's why it's so fun. I think that's why also you were able to expand on it. I think if they would have busted all of their nuts at the beginning of the franchise, I mean, where do you go from there? So this feels like a good way to intro the series. The cast of characters, you know, not too bad. A lot of good actors in this one, but all in all, like just the kills just aren't memorable enough to put it too much higher on the list. I mean, you know, respect the elder, respect the first product, but I think some of the other stuff that came after was just a little bit better. Coming in at number two is Final Destination 2. The opening scene to this movie has the best kill in all of Final Destination, easily. The log scene. If you haven't seen the log scene, you're fucking missing out. It's one of the most visceral, beautifully shot. They got it from like a couple different angles and it's just like, God damn, is it satisfying just seeing this giant log absolutely destroy, like dust. This officer right through his car. It's one of the best kills. The movie itself, the acting was on par and the script was on par with the Final Destination or Final Destination 4. It's horrible. Like, I mean, early 2000s, character tropes like you know the guy's like man i got my big bag of weed man this is crazy man man don't take my cocaine man to 2000s but this movie makes up for it with a lot of great kills. And, and this time too, it's just more. We had like six people in the original one. Now we're gonna make like 10. So they're trying to double up on the kills, trying to double up on just the amount of absurdity that they can throw in there. And you get some fun stuff. Like you get a girl getting crushed in an elevator. That's fun. Who doesn't like to see an elevator crush scene? Guy getting cut in half with barbed wire. Another great thing too. Airbag explodes, crushing a girl's head. I mean, like a lot of just like really solid stuff, but God, it just can't take the, the it can't take the number one seed because it's still is in the realm of the script is bad. The story is just really stupid. It's just one of those things where you're like, eh, I don't know. There's some weird editing issues and pacing issues like in the beginning of the movie the thing that sets them off is that there's a wood truck in front of them that has the big logs and that log hits off and it causes all this wreck so then whenever she, the main girl stops back and she stops her car and she stops other cars from going on the highway she's like oh there's gonna be a horrible wreck this is gonna be so bad and it takes like five to ten minutes before you see the log truck drive by and you're like shouldn't that already be way gone it should be already be out there because she was already at the exit it's one of those things where you're like that doesn't that's just kind of stupid oh and then also a giant truck they're in an on-ramp and there's a there's a blockade by them right and she's blocking the blockade a truck somehow manages to get into the interior of the blockade and completely destroy the truck killing every one of her friends or i was like how did they get around that it was immediately like what i kind of did that it was fun to see i like it was fun to see these people just explode but i was like that how did that happen it can't happen i didn't know but a lot of the deaths too are just very unintentionally funny like the big thing is like you know all these people have like cues and clues to like, oh, like Spidey senses. Oh, I see pigeons. I, I need to go look at pigeons. And then they go to the dentist's office where one of the kids at, and he's like suffocating on uh, nitrous oxide because the oxygen gets turned off and something falls in his mouth. He's like, oh. so he wakes up and he's able to get out of it. And you're thinking that, oh, okay, it's pigeons because these pigeons are like flying into the window and like cracking this fucking three inch window glass. And you go outside and then the main characters see the kid and they're like pigeons. And he like kind of just like does and runs into the pigeons and then one of the giant glass planes just smashes them. And the smash is awesome, all right? I'm not trying to talk shit on the smash. The smash is great, but watching him run around like Simple Jack and the pigeons and stuff, only to be smashed gratuitously is, it was just a very, very, very funny comedic beat. It's also funny too, because they try to like stop him and they say pigeons. And I think when they say pigeons is when he notices them. Yeah, like by saying pigeons, it actually alerts huh? the child to run up to them versus if they wouldn't have said anything, he probably wouldn't have got smashed by the glass plane so but then like i said too earlier the the woman within the elevator who gets her body smashed in the elevator her head gets hooked her hair gets hooked by a guy holding a box full of like old amputee arms with those old hooks and he's just hanging in there and he's like oh, oh and hooks her hair and she's like oh it's pretty fun but yeah just the idea of a guy holding a box of uh victorian-esque fucking pirate hook hands was just funny and then it ends with the classic kid just fucking exploding by the barbecue and his body parts land on the plate. So this movie was a lot of really funny kills, a lot of good kills, and it's just more kills at that. So it's a big step up from Final Destination 1, in my opinion. But last but not least, it is the crown jewel of the Final Destination Empire. I don't care what anybody says. This is hands down the best one, Final Destination 3, baby.
Now, let me tell you something. I might be biased. This movie also came out around the same time where I was like starting to really understand like getting your interest as a kid and stuff and things are starting to stick with you a bit longer. And I remember seeing the Final Destination 3 poster so much. The roller coaster one. Remember that? It was everywhere. That just, it caused such an imprint on my mind. But upon rewatch, this movie is unironically the best one out of all of them. Decent script. It's not good. I'm not saying it's good, but best acting out of all of them. This movie felt the shortest too because it flowed so well. All the kills, very fun. The actors are memorable you have the the girl who does ramona flowers she's in it she's great and you have all these other collection of people you have this incel guy trying to take video shots of girls the entire time and you're like this did not age well <laughs> Within the first 10 minutes, you can immediately tell you're like, oh my God, this is such a huge upgrade. The way that they see the clues now is from pictures that the girl took at the amusement park. You know, the amusement park death scene's fun. People flying out, doing all kinds of crazy shit. Just a, being on a roller coaster of hell and getting flown out and detached and thrown all over the place. And then when we have our list of survivors now, just the pacing of all the kills feels fun. Also, we, we, we get to linger on things a bit more. This is also the first one too, where one of the scenes just involves topless women for the whole entire time, which is not like that's like a perk but it was just one of those things where i was like they're really kind of trying it all aren't they they're trying to be like we need to get that teenage crowd in here to really start moving tickets for real and the death sequence of those kills of the two girls tanning pretty fucking brutal i mean they're being cooked alive once again condensation water drips down on something electric causing the tanning beds to go super hot a board breaks and they can't get out of the tanning bed and they're boiling alive they don't even look burnt half the time though which is funny they look like a roasted pig you know like a, a pig is glazed because it's been roasted they look like that and then slowly they start to peel away and it's really gross but it gets so hot that even the glass underneath them breaks and they fall into it it's just really brutal and it ends with this beautiful and really funny transition shot where the tanning beds are on fire and it hard cuts to silence and it's both of their caskets at the same time and you're just like mm. That's the kind of schlock and fun that I love to see. So quick into the movie too. Doesn't even hold a fucking beat. You're already there. Really fun stuff. Just the other kills in the scenes are just really fun. And like watching our two main characters kind of try to solve this clue and try to dissect these pictures of who's next, who's going to be the next person to die. You have a great scene where they're in a drive-thru and the incel guy that's trying to take pictures of girls pussy before, you know, record up their skirts and shit like that. The incel guy who would be a champion in today's terms has a fucking engine just like hit the back of his head and the fan of the engine just like tears his brain out. But it's great. And you get, you know, little callbacks in the franchise too. Like the truck that almost backs into them is the beer truck from the second movie. So, you know, you're like, that's a cute little callback. From there too, you know, they're kind of going around talking to everybody. You have to roid it up fucking jock who gets his head smashed. They go and visit like these two people working at Home Depot and the girl gets like nails shot through her face. That causes her boyfriend to be really vindictive and wants to kill our main character because he thinks that he caused her death and all that stuff. And then you get a nice, another big smashing of the body. You gotta love this smashing he gets smashed and it's uh ah so good a lot of sh little little chef kisses it's nice hey yeah the little twitching of his body was nice it's just kind of grotesque it does the similar thing of the same kind of callback of ah it's done we defeated death we disrupted the order therefore we are safe and they're on the train at the end of new york and they all coincidentally meet up and it's a big revelation that uh oh they're in trouble and the train crashes and uh you're left with them all dying at the end and that's the thing is like it's just a well-paced movie it knows exactly what it's trying to be but it does it in a fun way all the actors are good too so you get to see some good acting performances and a bunch of just grisly murders and it's just uh it, it's a lot of fun and then you know the takeaway from all this is just that uh if i were you just go on youtube and watch the death compilation you can watch three watch three for the fun of it you know it's nice to watch the movies and this is if you're gonna watch any of them just watch three you can skip everyone else and just watch the death compilation on youtube it's a, it's a lot of fun so that's the ranking today final destination four final destination five final destination one final destination two and then final destination three those are my rankings i'm gonna be trying to do saw next if you have another series you want me to try to rank or watch or talk about feel free to let me know below uh you know if you cheat death try not to i guess just die the hassle of trying to survive seems so much more difficult than just kind of giving up and dying that's the takeaway from final destination is don't try give up and die that is the human experience thank you guys so much for watching today thank you thank you i love you I'm planning on watching the Saw movies and I'm not, I'm, it makes me want to cry. I think there's like over 12 hours of Saw movies and I have to see that stupid little fucking puppet ride around on that tricycle. I'm not, I'm not excited about this. I want to play a game called, I don't know. What's a good joke there? I want to play a game called pleasing the algorithm. <laughs> I don't fucking know, whatever.